My garage is a mess, but you know what they say, one man's mess is another man's treasure. So I'm gonna go digging and try to find some cool stuff in this garage. I know there's some stuff in here. Maybe it's cool, maybe it's weird, maybe it's just unusual. I don't know, let's see what I find. The first thing we got is really cool. Uh, it's totally unique. Not many people out there I think have one, so I'm pretty special in that way. But this was mine from when I was a kid, so let me just bring it out to explain. Oh, look at this thing. This is a rubber band ball, and it is a big one. Probably weighs somewhere around 20 pounds. I made this myself from when I was a little kid. I used to have a paper route, so for those of you who maybe don't understand know what a paper route is, it's where you actually used to have newspapers printed on paper and you'd have someone that would deliver those to the front step or the driveway of people that wanted to read the paper. So I was a paper boy. I had a bicycle with a basket on the front and I would ride around in the afternoons and then sometimes in the morning and deliver papers. Newspapers had rubber bands that kept them bound together. I would order extra rubber bands on my paper out and make this. In the very center of this is a bouncy ball, like that big, not very big at all. So I started with smaller rubber bands, then had to order bigger ones. And eventually you see these big, big red ones. I had to order large, large red ones uh, for this thing because the smaller ones just wouldn't fit. As you can see, we have a lot of dry rot. You know, some red rubber bands are like literally just falling off as we speak. Uh, and that's just because it's been outside and been hanging out in the garage for many, many years. But this thing's really special. And in fact, I showed my kids this the other day and now they want to start their own rubber band balls. So we started that project too. Right now, theirs are like that big. So they got a ways to go. But I'm going to put this down because my arms are hurting. Pretty cool though. That's a big rubber band ball. Next up, we got baseball cards, but not any baseball card. We have a roll of uncut 1989 baseball cards. And if you can see, we got some heavy hitters in there. We got uh, Oral Hershiser, Roger Clemens, Don Mattingly. There's some awesome ones in here, man. So uh, I've had these in the garage for a while. I don't know if this is a rare thing to have an uncut set of baseball cards. I honestly don't know, but uh, pretty cool. I got a few rolls of them, so I've been trying to keep them in good condition as best I can, which I don't know if that's been a very good effort at all, to be honest. If anybody knows that these are worth any money, please comment below. I would love to hear uh, what these things are worth because uh, they're pretty special to me. I used to play a lot of sports, baseball, uh, soccer, tried football, wasn't that good at it. I used to collect baseball cards a lot when I was younger, so this is pretty special to me. So I'm gonna put it back away now so it doesn't get ruined. And last but not least, we have a trophy. This one is from 1996. That's right, that was a long time ago. And this was actually my first year on the professional circuit, if you wanna call it. The series was called the Bicycle Stunt Series. It was presented by Matt Hoffman. He did it for a number of years, uh, even before this he was doing it, which you know, was what inspired me to want to ride bikes and compete in the first place. But this tour specifically was called Destination Extreme. And this was a contest series that I think there may have been like four or five stops through the year and they all led up to the X Games. So there was a couple of these where if you went to the contest and rode well at that contest, you could actually earn a spot into the X Games, which is pretty rad. This one was in Chicago, Illinois, battle number three, and it was in Stuntman Street Pro. Uh, they called it Stuntman. There was also Stunt Boy, which was like amateur level, I guess, or just below Stuntman. But I rode in the Stuntman class, and as you can see, I don't know if you can see it, it says fourth place rulings, not so important. <laughs> uh, they had all these funny little sayings, so the winner probably said, I rule, just straight up I rule, and then everything else was a little bit less after that. But this is one of my first trophies. Uh, it's a little bit dirty, unfortunately, so I'm going to clean it off. I met a lot of awesome riders from Chicago area, Jeff Harrington, Buddha. Oh my gosh, uh, Aaron Mauser, just a ton of rad guys. Ryan Jackson, there's a, I mean, too many to name, honestly. But rode with those guys at Scrap Skate Park back in the day. Always loved that scene, always loved going back there. So this was probably a very special one for me because I got to hang out with all those guys and compete. So, and actually, to be noted, I started riding for Haro in 1997. This is from 1996. So one year before I was on Haro, I think I was riding for Bontrager, which is a company that now only does mountain bike, uh, pretty much just components. So when I rode for them, there was a bike company out of Santa Cruz, California that made bikes. They wanted to get into BMX. They brought myself and my buddy Chris Bryant on and we rode for them. And then I turned pro and got on the circuit and uh, had this like orange Bontrager bike, which some of you may remember. I'm going to be doing a few more of these because there's a ton of stuff as you can see back here. Way too much stuff. I got to start doing some clean. I got to really <laughs> just dig in there so I'll pull things out as we go 
and share a little bit of information about it. But until then, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, make sure you share, tell your friends about it, and I will be back. Until then, peace.